my name is Brittany Goodwin. I am an opera librettist and a stage director. I once dabbled into acting. It's what I went to university for, but through the twists and turns of life, I found myself on the other side of the table, enjoying writing and, and putting it all together. That's right. And that's where our paths had crossed. Um, you know, Brittany, uh, do you, I think you were still at uh, so like Fairleigh Dickinson. Right? Fairleigh Dickinson, yes. yeah, in Madison, which is where uh, Raiders Theater was. And uh, somehow we were fortunate enough to recruit you into the Young Playwrights Festival for, for that first year. And um, I think you've probably performed in it for, I don't know, like two I'm, or three years until we got you working on the other side, as you said. Absolutely. And and I kind of, um, at that point, when I when I transitioned over to teaching artist, I was so familiar with the the um, mechanics of how we were acting in something and turning it over and working with another playwright. So I was able yeah. to fill in um, so much. But I do remember. So I finished Fairly Dickinson in 2013, and that's yeah. when I believe I began working with you guys um, as an actor. Yeah. And so yeah, there was a solid like two or three seasons where I was solely doing the um, young playwrights um, acting. But then, yeah, I transitioned to teaching over the summer, doing um, improv. Oh, that's right. And yes, and um, the playwriting class. Right. And then I started being a teaching artist, going into the school system and doing it, and acting in their plays as well as teaching them the craft of playwriting. That's right. And I think uh, you know, let's let's throw these up here now. When we were talking before we started, I said that I had a couple of pictures. Let's see if this actually works. Cue the embarrassing uh, photo reel. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Uh, let me find it. Still learning this uh, Zoom thing here. Let's see. All right. Hey, you're better than I am. Oh, All screen right, share. Awesome. Screen share. All right, here we go. There's one. Do you see that? Oh, look at yes. me. Is this? I think this is the one we were talking about. This is a, I, This came out of the 2012 folder for the New Jersey Young Playwrights Festival. I think Oh goodness, this is, so I was working earlier than I even thought. Well, that yeah, and we uh, one thing that I had tried to do when we started to um it, sort of the history of the, the State Young Playwrights Festival at Writers Theater was that um, when I started working there in 2002, the program wasn't uh, um, funded enough to have a, a festival performance. So a couple of years later, when we were able to partner with uh, Premier Stages at Kane University, we um, were able to get performances going. And I think this is one of the first years we did it. So I wanted to, because we we're at the university and we'd been working with the Kane students, I wanted to reach out to other places too. To bring people in so yeah if you were still at FDU at the time um you know we definitely absolutely. Would have had you working there absolutely yeah and that was oh my gosh that was a type of fun that it just it revives your spirits because sometimes you could just be like why am I doing this why am I why am I in these acting classes that I'm just being like stretched so much and then you're just you're with children whose minds are so rich and excited and it just makes you so excited to share their story and I remember this was my first like this is probably day one of rehearsal this is probably, probably is, me yeah. launching into this <laughs> world for the first time so what a special screen grab to have yeah yeah Love that's great that. I, and I know I was telling you before I I, I, we, I know we have a production photo somewhere I hope we can find it where you're in that that wedding dress uh doing the Zumba Yes, I was Zumba, <laughs> pantomiming, eating a burrito on my wedding day. It was It was exciting. But I believe that this is probably the same play that we were rehearsing yeah. because Jeremy was across from me a lot as uh, the superhero of Chipotle. Yes, that's right. Here we are eight years later. And I, I know, can, right? Like, <laughs> you remember it right? was yesterday. So yeah, I do. One, this is another couple of years later um, over at one of the, uh, the Madison schools. <gasps> Right, you remember this? They had that new rock wall in that we uh, weren't supposed to go on. <laughs> so excited. So yeah. we would go into these schools and like there were just so many like quintessential fun like kid stuff and we walk in and we see <laughs> we see this rock climbing wall in the cafetorium right. and we were just like oh. <laughs> and, I mean Jim was like our den leader. We were all just like these like goofy actors that just wanted to play all the time. We're like, Jim, can we go over here and hang off the wall? He's like, yes, I'll get a picture. Go. Well, it's great too because it, it looks like you're actually hanging on the wall, which is fun. It does. So, yeah, and it was always great too with, with you guys, especially all the folks in this picture. I mean, 
This oh was my cute. gosh, um, what a group. <laughs> what a fun, fun group. Yeah, and I, I, because, I, I go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we just have to be chameleons, you know, like from mm. one, it, it, it's this particular age bracket, I find especially that like, you could tell what they're conceptualizing and what they're coming to understand. So like, a lot of these plays would be about like, like a dead parent because I think that that's something that either like in their literature that they're reading at school or like through cinema or through like I don't know something at home like a lot of like the fourth graders fifth graders are clicking like what if I lost a parent what if someone mm -hmm. isn't here anymore that I'm used to and I mean there, there'll be there'll be a play about a farting contest and then go completely into like I lost my mother and right. like we have to be these chameleons who are like you know having the fun time of talking about farting and being the stapler who farts and then going into like <laughs> this like legitimizing their fear of I could lose someone and this is what it looks like when you're going through a stage of mourning and right. it's yeah, it's just all of those things. And so when you have a group of people that you just like love completely and you can hang off things and 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 be goofy, like you're gonna have that special, special bond on stage too to to go through it all. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think one of the things that's always drawn me to um to this kind of work is that uh I think a lot of times kids are very hesitant to um let me see if I can get out of this now and get back to to you and me. I'm not sure. Um, as I vamp here, uh oh. All right, da, we'll figure da, it da, out. Da, da. Bum, bum, oh, there we go. Bum, 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 nope. <laughs> no, I don't even know ah! how to. Oh no, there you go. There's the button. Okay, good. There we go. <laughs> We're back, right? Um, and better than ever. And, and better than ever now that we've gone down that that memory lane. Um, no, I, you know, kids. A lot of times, uh, I think they you know they want to be expressive. Um, there was a great quote I found that when I started doing my research um, about kids. Uh, kids want to write from the moment they're born, and they. You know, they mark on everything and it's, it's their way of uh, the first time a child uh, is really able to say this is who I am um, and I found with a lot of these plays you know they are goofy but they, they do have those deep moments um, absolutely and, and I think uh, what's great about doing the work uh, that, that we've done and bringing those to life is it allows them to see um, a validity in, in their in their words um, and the fact that adults are doing it too or, or people who they view as adults even though sometimes we aren't much older than 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 them yeah um really is uh it's one of the strengths to do in that kind of a kind of a thing so absolutely and one of my favorite um parts of the performances were watching their teachers <laughs> see like what what their voices are like outside of a classroom and and also their parents coming and being yes. like, huh, like, I didn't know you had thoughts like that. I didn't know that that's how you saw the world. Um, right. The, there were lots of different special moments with parents after we would perform because, you know, we would have what Jim would call the Kodak moment. Where, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> where everyone could take out their cell phones and take a picture mm -hmm. with us. That's right. Um, but a lot of parents would come up to us after and be like, this kid's really shy at home. Right. And I'm really happy that they have a world on a page that like, you know, yeah. it's, it's so special what, what we're able to facilitate and what we are vessels of is extremely special and, and it's fun and it's moving and, and, and I find it to be imperative. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially times like we're going through now, um, you know, it's important to, uh, to have that outlet, especially for kids. I mean, it's, uh, it's really kind of, fascinating for lack of a, a word that maybe would give a little bit uh too much of a slant to that but um yeah no but, no but absolutely like I, I mean some children i think might think that this is normal like that this is like what sure. you or i have gone through in our lifetime and this is just like yeah. like a 10-year cycle like when like the locusts come you know like but right. it's it's not it's not and um and it's important to have those conversations and and having it through the lens of art is so safe and wonderful yeah, yeah to draw a parallel and to forward your thinking in that in that regard right. so yeah absolutely that's great you know and um, one of these two I want to make sure that we talk about uh, is uh, you know not not just that that work and inspiring th those uh, young people to do that creation but um, also, you've you've had a path. You alluded to this a little bit, where you started in theater as an actor. Yeah. You moved, you know, you moved beyond the 
the stage, you know, behind the table, however we, whatever phrase we use. So <laughs> the phrase of the moment. The phrase of the moment, right? Backstage, whatever. Um, but <laughs> you've also found your way into um, other artistic mediums I think are really fascinating. Um, and I, um, you know, I really don't know how you got there. So I'm curious to hear, like, what was that path like for you? Because I'm sure, too, that there are, um, there are young people out there who, who will see this that, um, you know, who, who would have an interest in multiple places. It's not just theater. There's, there's so much more that... Oh, uh, gosh, absolutely. And there's nothing, there's nothing funnier than, like, when you're, when you're a junior or senior and you're trying to figure out what you're going to do. And, and, like, there's, like, almost like a joke that it's, like, well, I could be, like, a fireman or a police officer or a teacher or like I mean there's like five things that you choose from right. <laughs> but like there's obviously many 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 more professions out there so um in high school I I was an actor I was an actor ever since I could stand you know I I was a dancer I I did everything on the stage but then I took theater arts and I had to do a directing assignment and it was a music video project. So you pick your favorite song and stage it. And while I was doing that, I was like, oh, I like this a mm. lot more. Because instead of being one person in a play, I got to think of being so many different people in a play and moving them around and how it yeah. would look and how each of them would feel. And it was so much more stimulating and gratifying to me to like look at it through the lens of the lights, look at it through the lens of, of the floorboards and how things moved. Um, and I got excited about that in a way that I, that was very different from acting. And at 16 years old, you know, I thought it was just something cool I was doing. So then I, I kept getting voted to be the class director oh, cool. in the assignments. So like everyone would like have a vote and like, it was like, I remember like comical, like it was like 20 out of 25 people were like Brittany Goodman, Brittany Goodman, Brittany Goodman. And like, there was something that went off in my mind that I'm like, hmm, maybe I should follow this impulse and do this. But this was back in like, I mean, I'm not old, I'm 30, but in 2007, 2008, there were not really directing programs. Like if you wanted to sure. go to school for theater, you went to school either to like be an actor, you went in a general theater program and like learned all of it. So um, I continued on my path to becoming an actor because right. I figured that that's what I should just do. And, and people, you know, validated that. And so I listened and it was in college that I, I missed that feeling that high school theater arts feeling of, of making a story instead of being one pawn in someone else's story. Right. So I got an internship working at a theater company as a stage manager because I needed an internship. And then they liked me. So they asked me to come back and direct the next year. And this was at um, a children's theater company, Jerry Gibson in, uh, in Florham Park. Mm -hmm. And okay, yeah. um, so I worked there for four seasons um, and I just was so happy creating. It was me and my friends from college that I was like, oh, like you don't have a costume person. Like my friend could intern and do the costumes and like we could figure that out and like she also does hair and makeup and we just basically created this like little mini ensemble mm -hmm. at this at this you know children's theater summer camp and it really validated that I was like okay I think I really want to be doing this I really do um so then I began directing and I, I was still acting at the time. Like right. after I graduated FDU, I got into a program at Columbia University where I was an actor for their MFA directing students. So I would literally go in several times a week and I would listen to the notes that they were getting as directors mm. all the while being an actor. Yeah, great. and and I mean, Ann Bogart was their teacher. Like it was an incredible oh, wow. experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it was like really, really incredible. So it was satiating my 
my love and fuel for performing while I was squirreling and gathering information for the other side as well. And I always say, no matter what, who I am as a writer and who I am as a stage director would be nothing without my foundation in acting and storytelling. It, it just wouldn't. I know how to communicate with people because I knew what it was like to be in their shoes. Yes. I know how to arc a story because I know when my plot line is anemic and I'm like, huh, they really didn't resolve this. So I know how to look through as an actor at each and every one of my characters that I'm doing and make sure that they have, I advocate for their voice as well. Yeah. So but don't get me wrong. I don't have any regrets at all about my time acting. Um, it was extremely informative on where I am now in my life. I could go back. Who knows? Um, So anyway, I began directing more and more. And then I got an opportunity to direct an opera. And I was like, I've seen one opera in my (laughs) life. I know nothing about it. But I was assured that it was a new opera. It was in English. And um, just to just give it a go, to give it a go. And I was like, okay. So this was um, a composer who ended up being one of my best friends. Um, He was finishing up school in Vermont and he needed a stage director to, to bring, to bring his like first opera to life. And I fell in love with it in a way that I, I couldn't completely understand how I view opera is the story is more akin to like an epic poem Mm. than it is a musical where there's just so many like devices that need to be hit where opera is just poetry set to music and dealing with that and and the physical vignettes and how that all manifests and is brought to life i've just fell in love with it so while i was doing that i had mentioned that i was writing a play i was writing um the wonders of alice while i was um while i was doing all of this and and the baritone in in usher was like oh why don't you write like lyrics for songs or libretti and do like a book for an opera and i was like why not? <laughs> so I I decided to do what was um what's called an art song, which is kind of like a song cycle where yeah. one person could take on multiple different personalities with one instrument. Um, or you can do like um two singers and two instruments. So it's like kind of mirrors one another. So I like studied like the background of that and I decided to do um do that as my toe dip into that and that went really really well um songs of the soul beams had its premiere at bam which is a very exciting place to have your premiere of your work (laughs) um and then it was picked up by le poisson rouge um so that was very exciting and then i started writing full-length opera so that was my my stone skip in but again like i was i think 25 or 26 when I was starting all of this. So like yeah. I had no foresight when I was in high school or even college that I was going to be writing opera and like <laughs> living in LA. <laughs> I, I, I could not have predicted that at all. And it's exciting to, it, it's terrifying sometimes, but it's exciting to like go through life and just, follow your impulse and what Mm -hmm. feels organic and right as opposed to being afraid of it and and i'm just i'm all about just like embracing it and and you know you'll know when it doesn't fit don't force it right you move on that's i'm so glad you said that that's so important um for everybody to hear i young old it doesn't matter though i think a lot of us would do very well by ourselves if, if all we learn to do from here on out is to um, kind of embrace what happens and, and go with our go with our gut and kind of follow the signs. Absolutely. You know, yeah. And again, like our foundation of learning theater is so much of confidence and mm-hmm. speaking eloquently and right. confidently in front of people, and also following an impulse. Like you, it, it, there's this example that I love to give. There's this play called Our Country's Good, and it is about um, convicts in England going over to Australia, Mm. and the boat ride 
from England to Australia where someone had proposed that they put on a play. And a lot of the people policing the boat were like, why would you be rewarding them with something fun and right. putting on a play? And that person's rebuttal was because they will understand empathy and they will understand what they did was wrong if they are in the shoes living as someone else. Yes. And what was even more beautiful about that play is the ensemble of police and jurisdiction doubles as the convicts. Mm. So it's one scene where they're just talking about how these like people are low lives and they shouldn't have merriment. And then they change their costumes like this and become the people making the play. Wow. It is such a gorgeous, um, like 360 scope of humanity. Um, uh, sorry, my phone's going off. Um, that it's, I, I think it perfectly encapsulates what the theatrical experience is. Learning mm -hmm. empathy, learning confidence, um, and being in someone else's shoes. And all of that is something that if kids had in their diet, just with science and milk, right? <laughs> I think that we might be really better off <laughs> as a Absolutely. society that feels for one another. Yeah. You know, that it's uh, that, that idea of empathy too, and in, in being in a character's shoes. When I started um, in graduate school the first time, uh, one of the <laughs> things, one of the things that really spoke to me, you know, the educational theater. So it's like, you know, okay, so we're talking about plays for kids, you know, everything else. But one of the things that in, when we started talking about theory was that idea of that, um, you know, this is a way for children to, explore ideas or uh, empathize with others or that idea of put yourself in someone else's shoes. They could literally go and do that in a creative environment, but, uh, and, and reap the um, experiential benefits of, of the experience without any of the, uh, uh, the difficulties, you know, that there's no, um, the risk can, can be um, replicated, but, but the, the danger of it, isn't quite the same and it's it, it, it that really resonated with me just the sense of all the stories that i know i love uh, i'm able to see myself through that character and then i'd learn from it uh, it's it's Absolutely. just a, a fascinating idea that i think we forget a lot about and um you know you, you've mentioned a couple of things here, here and there too about you know the, the idea of presentation um and that's sort of where we start from and learning and what's been fascinating for me this year focusing with on middle school students um, is uh, really teaching that essentially what my curriculum is now broken down to. And I've had the opportunity where I meet with the, the kids each marking period. So I've, I've kind of had a moment to reflect and revise as we went through. That's fantastic. It's, oh, it's been great. Um, at first I was kind of like, you know, this is, uh, how am I going to manage this? But it's, it's been wonderful to reflect. Like moving benchmark contingent upon people's needs yeah. I think it's like a, a wonderful wonderful right. luxury and to go in with like you know, I was I, I was hired I was talking to you before I was hired about a week and a half before school started so I had to throw something together very quickly <laughs> yeah. um, but it was but I also was able to go in knowing that like you know, they, they wanted me to, to explore a little bit with it and um, what we essentially came down to this this past marking period which has been a little difficult given that we're working remotely this time but yeah. um, it really boils down to, I always tell them, the only things you need for theater are an actors, um, actors, an audience, and a story. And so we really boil everything down to those things. And what's interesting to find, um, you know, in a world where we, uh, even before we had to connect only this way virtually, you know, everyone's got their screen and, you know, we're, we're having a hard time connecting to each other. Just learning that, like, they're there and someone else is there interacting in real time. Um, we, that we, if we look at theater as working on it that way, you know, we're, we're learning a skill that's going to help us uh, in the future. It's been a wonderful thing. I get a lot of kids who come in very afraid, um, who then suddenly just realize if I just think of it as I'm talking to someone else and how am I, how am I standing? How am I talking to them? How are we relating to each other? Um, it's, it's been neat to see them as, as people, you know, come out of this 10 weeks of class. Absolutely. Um, and just and to think too, that it's, you know, it's, it's theater. I mean, they, they come in thinking they're going to do weird things and, on the first day of class, I, I do have an acting exercise where in the end they're walking around the room, um, mooing and clucking and acting like barnyard animals. Ah! <laughs> so I tell them, I said, I've attended. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. And that's what I tell them. Said, this is, you know, I learned this from a guy who he, uh, he directed at Lincoln Center and, uh, you know, in San Francisco, he worked with Al Pacino. I said, this, is, this was his staple thing in my yeah. college class. And he always said, you know, you, you uh, come into a class like this, 
uh, feeling self-conscious. It's the most, you've done something completely ridiculous. And so now there's no way, no, no reason why you have to feel that way anymore. Um, Absolutely. You know, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of fun, but it's so giving I'm, yourself I'm, permission to, to feel something yes. is, um, is a very important thing as well. Yeah. Just, you know, throughout the twists and turns of life, if you learn early on, like I have a feeling I, I can acknowledge it and I can control and do something with it. Right. That's again, something extremely important. Um, what I, so I used to teach acting classes through, you know, all of these years, um, <laughs> that I've discussed. And, um, when a parent is like, why should my kid do acting classes? I'm like, mm -hmm. not because they want to be an actor. Like they will learn so much in that room that is gingered into every arena of life. They want to be a business person. they will be steps ahead. If they want to go into marketing, they will be steps ahead. Like yep. owning, uh, as I said before, owning a room, confidence, empathy, all of those things, like you just simultaneously exercise unlike anything else Absolutely. out there. Yeah. When I, I think um, it's fascinating to um, compare kids today with even students I had eight to 10 years ago. Um, you know, when we, we were doing these uh, the young playwrights programs together, I think that they're vastly different because the world is so different. Um, yeah. You know, we talk a lot too about screen times and things, but I, I think what um, gets overlooked in that is just the fact that there's so much power in our own hands to create content, for lack of a better word, um, you know, to be creative, be expressive, to, to um, I talked with Walter about, you know, we, we can, um, be in charge of our own narrative in, in this yeah. case, you know, I mean, we don't have to be, um, you even said this too, with being an actor, you, you're, you're a pawn in someone else's story. You can create the story and put it out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's uh, that's a very powerful thing um, that I think is, 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 uh, is, is great for arts. And I, I, and I wanted to talk to you about that because I knew that would come up in the conversation. And also I, I really wanted to make sure that the young people and, and mentors who are seeing this video, you know, can see just the many ways you've branched out. Um, to do that. Yeah, kind of stuff, so. absolutely. And, and, you know, again, I, I can't say I wouldn't, I would not have gained success without the thing that came prior to it. I, sure. I have not one qualm about how I've spent my time these past, God, I guess I entered college, what, at 18, 19. So like uh, the past, like, you know, 10 years, mm -hmm. everything was so purposeful. Um, and, it's not, it's, it's nothing groundbreaking that you have to do either. You can't, it's, right. it's to teach, to teach someone is not, I read an entire book and I'm going to give you a dissertation on three things that you could be doing. It's as simple as one of my first exercises that I would do as a teaching artist was, do you know that um, book humans of New York and that yeah. website humans <laughs> of New York, I would take different people from That's that cool. and I would show them pictures of it. And I would be like, write a monologue from their point of view. And yeah. then I would say, write a monologue the next day in their life from that monologue. And then I would give them the quote that was associated with that person's picture. And I'd be like, is that how you envisioned them? Mm. Is that how you envisioned how they would speak? So it's little things like that, that it's, it doesn't, it doesn't take, it doesn't take groundbreaking, oh, I'm scared to do this. It's, right. it's little things. If you have a child and you wanna make sure that they're being active and using their imagination, show them a picture, have them to write a story about a picture. Right. You never know where that, where that image will take you. Right. You never know. No, that's true, that's, that's great, that's well said. Um, so I wanna uh, you know, kind of bring, bring us to the end of this conversation with two more questions. Yeah. Um, first one is, what do you, th what do you see as, uh, having been the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome? And that could be anything you could talk, you know, you could talk personally, artistically. Um, and it, and it comes from the place too, of where I, when I'm working with uh, my own students in particular, but, but just youth in general, um, I think it's that idea of, uh, um, what you said, it doesn't have to be big, you know, it's, it's taking that first step. I find yeah. that's usually my, my process. This is the guide. I'm just going to take you to the first step and then watch where you go from there. Uh, I think a lot of times we can get bogged down with this idea of it's, it's a challenge. I can never overcome that. So I just, I love hearing those stories from people, things that they've yeah. overcome. Um, honestly, I would say twofold. One is the obvious, um, the arts are 
woefully underfunded and it's not and it's there's nothing more exciting than someone wanting to pay you to write a story and have it brought out into the world but then thinking simultaneously how will i juggle this bill how will i be doing this and keep all of these different plates spinning i don't have enough dowels and there's and there's too many plates that want to be spun you <laughs> i know? love that you use that thank you for using that imagery <laughs> You're welcome. I love the vaudeville image. That's great. <laughs> Leave it to me. Like I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, I love it. Um, and and yeah, so you really have to um economize and really have such. If if you want to go into the arts, there's something that I discovered that I wish someone had blatantly told me. One, some some people come from families that are more well off than others. And there's no shame in that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be an actor, sitting on the floor for nine to five, waiting for someone to see you is a big part of the game. And that requires a lot of getting up at five in the morning and traveling to sit on that floor at nine o'clock and wait to be seen. And then how do you make money during that? It's, it's, you know, it's, you really have to understand what your life will look like mm. and how you could live within that life. So that's number one. Number two is um, making your own art and, and meeting people and saying, okay, like, so a perfect example to me is the strange dog boys. So mm. we used to um, work with a bunch of guys who went to college together and they started a theater company, which still is running today. Yeah, it is. Um, and they met in college and they're all like five years my senior. And, um, and yeah, just being like, I don't want to audition for other people. I want to write stories. I want to work with the same people. I would rather work and make money and put some of my money into me acting with my friends and do that. And I think that that is something that is underexplored. And I always advocate for that. I always say, do you want to sit on the floor for a million hours to sing 16 bars of music? You might. And that's fine. There's no job. I have students, past students that are on cruise ships, unfortunately, right now, mm. um, but have done tons of incredible things doing Rodgers and Hammerstein and doing right. all of these like amazing dances and skill sets. That's amazing. But there are some people who want to tell stories and who want to design their own costume and work with their friends. That's right. okay too. And you can make a life doing that as well. I just yeah. like need to say that because that's looked down slash not explored a lot. And I, sure. I felt the need to say that. Um, another thing that is extremely, extremely important is trusting that you are enough and advocating for yourself Great. because you know this this very well is probably a life thing i could only speak from the theater thing because that's all really genuinely i've done but there is someone lurking around every corner questioning what you're doing why you're doing it um if you know what you're doing um I'm, I'm five feet tall. I am a bubbly, young looking female. <laughs> the industry does not particularly love that. Um, they, being young is a weakness. Being bubbly seems that you're not intelligent. There, there are so many things that I felt the need that I had to defend and mm -hmm. show myself. If I just exist as me and advocate for myself when I see something that doesn't seem right, it's fine. And I've been in the positions where I'm like, everyone thinks I'm an idiot. I'm standing here. What? Like one of my first operas that I directed, there were two people from the Met in my cast. And wow. I'm like, why, why would they listen to me? Like, why, what can I tell them that they don't already know? And let me tell you, one of them came back to me and I wrote the secondary lead role in my last opera for him. And Princess Malen, he was the jester. Um, and, and, he, and he sang countless times at the Met. Um, so trusting that you are enough and trusting with confidence that you can give is something that is extremely, extremely important. The world will go like this to you a lot. 
but if you stand <laughs> sentinel and the, the, in in the earth that's something that you should really there's i can't advocate for it enough for you advocating for yourself that's great. I, my last question is always, what advice would you give? But I think you just nailed it right there. <laughs> right? It's, it's the best thing to say. So um, trust that you are that. enough. That's that something enough. that comes to me many, 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 many times. Yeah, I, that's great. Um, thank you for uh, for thank sharing you, all of that. And, 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 oh, it's my pleasure. It's always uh, it's always good to see you. I'm glad that uh, that we could reconnect and that we could uh, you know share your experience and your your knowledge with uh, with all the other young folks out there. Absolutely, that, this genuinely you know, has been my years with this company. I always say, this is my favorite job. <laughs> this is my favorite thing that I've done. And it's it was seriously the happiest, happiest times. They were the most pure, organic and wonderful art making times. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I hope for such, a, it, for the soil to be enriched in young playwrights. That's great. Thank you. I hope so too. Of course. All right. Good. Well, thanks so much. I'm going to, we're going to shut off the recording here. I'll just, uh, we'll talk a little bit and then we'll go from cool. there. All right. Great. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, Jim.